You know, a few decades ago when I was a freshman in college, I had a speech class, and there was this little book we were given. It was a part of our test that came up periodically, and it was entitled 30 Days to a More Powerful Vocabulary. And it had all these words in it that normal people would not generally use. But you, of course, had to memorize the meanings of the words. So I want to take a page out of that book, and I want all of you to participate in the beginning of this sermon, and I'm going to give you a word, and I want to hear how you want to define it. Now, it's not an obscure word at all. It's a word that all of you have heard and maybe used, and maybe your parents used it on you if they were going to deprive you of it. And the word is privilege. When I say the word privilege, I want a little sampling here. What comes to your mind? We'll start with you, Janet. I just read my grandson's paper. Yes. He spoke of male privilege. The, the privilege that he had over women that he was All right, so we're talking then male privilege in this case, probably more of a derogatory meaning of the word privilege when you think of oftentimes male privilege means that women are being perhaps discriminated against, yes. just like white man's privilege. We knew that blacks for sure were discriminated against. Yes. So it's something you get to do that maybe only a select few get to do, and everybody else, it's too bad. Anybody else want to embellish on that? Okay, well, we're going to focus on a scripture today where God uses the word privilege, and it's going to be in reference to you and to me. And I hope we appreciate this privilege. Now, of course, when I say the word privilege, I go back to my childhood, and my mother would be quick to remind me that certain things I took for granted the privilege could be revoked, yes. you know, whether it would be my allowance or certain television programs or whatever it may have been. So I got the connotation of privilege as something you best mind your P's and Q's or somebody might snatch it away from you. You don't have it anymore. Right. All right. So I want you to turn with me over to the book of Philippians. My wife read this in the scripture reading, but we're going to go back. And, uh, of course, the letter of Philippians was written to a, a church, or churches, perhaps, would be better put, in the area of Philippi, which was a city there in Greece. And um, um, the nice thing about the letter of Phil Philippians is Paul doesn't really have anything negative to say about this group of people. I mean, they, they were his staunchest supporters. They sent him a lot of help, a lot of support. He coveted their prayers. He had a lot of friends there. And so he writes to them a very positive and upbeat letter, even though the Apostle Paul is writing it from jail. This is one of what they call the prison epistles. So as Paul is probably dictating this to somebody else, a scribe who's writing it down, uh, nonetheless, uh, this gets sent to these people in Philippi. So, he's going to give them verse 27 of chapter 1. We're going to cut in there and go about three, four verses here to the end of the chapter. He said, to live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. And again, this is an admonition to anybody who professes the name of Christ. Okay, if you're going to profess to be a Christian and you're a follower of the gospel, then live up to it. So that... Whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. Now, of course, in Paul's day and age, when he talked about opponents, they were people who were literally out to get them. I would say today... Our opponents are not necessarily people who want to kill us. 
but it's just all of the trials and the problems and what this society throws to us that is always trying to distract us from the Christian message and get us going off some other direction or deceived or seduced or whatever into sin of some kind or another. And so don't be intimidated by that. For them, this is again back to Paul's time, these opponents, their reserve or their resolve rather is an evidence of their destruction. In other words, they can't intimidate you and it's going to be turned back on them. But for you, it's your salvation. And this is God's doing. Now, here's the verse we really want to focus in on. For he, God, has graciously granted you the privilege, okay, not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. All right, now, I'm not going to dwell today on the suffering part. That's another day, another sermon, another subject. But I want to dwell on that little phrase, how God has graciously granted you the privilege of believing in Christ. Now, this is where, in some ways, not that I in any way question their motives or their intent or the sincerity But when people are going to go out and they're going to try to have altar calls and they're going to try to get people to believe in the Lord. Okay, now, I suppose as far as it goes, it's fine and good. But there's one underlying thing that I think often gets forgotten or missed. It's almost like if we make it persuasive enough, we can talk them into it and that's all that counts. But I think here is clearly revealed that if a person is really going to believe in Christ, they have to have been granted the privilege. They have to have been drawn, called, their mind open, convicted, all those factors that go with it. And and if if you're not granted that privilege, then chances are you're not going to believe and it's not going to mean anything to you and you're just going to go on about your business. And that's going to be that. So as we sit here today... We have been granted a privilege of believing in in Jesus and what he has done in the gospel message. And I don't know if you can think back. Can you remember back when there was a time when that was not a part of your life? And I'm not here for public confession. I certainly don't want to give you my sordid story of some of my shenanigans of my teenage years before I received my calling. Uh, But I can guarantee you there was a time when no way under the sun had I been graciously granted the privilege of believing in Christ, not in any convicting sense. All right, so privilege. This is what God defines it as. Not something to be taken for granted, not something to look down other people about at all. It's just a special privilege God has given to you and me and millions of others around the world like us. Now, have you, have you ever wrestled with this question where you said, why me, Lord? See, God could have called any number of people. Yes. So why me? Well, don't, don't lose any sleep over that question because I don't think you're ever going to come up with an answer. Not that it's anywhere near satisfactory or that maybe even anywhere near truthful. And certainly don't come up with the answer because you're smarter, better looking, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I know in our case it's not because we're richer, but, you know, nonetheless you could add a lot of reasons why people might think that God extended his calling to them. But with this privilege that God gives us in believing, I want to focus on some of the benefits that come with it that maybe, again, we take for granted. We just take for granted. What has been given to us because God gave us the privilege of believing in Christ and convicted us? Now, I got five of them here, and if I skip something that you may consider important, I'll give you a chance at the end you can add to the list, but these are five things that come to me Uh, rather quickly about why believing in Christ is a privilege and a blessing. The world today is a challenging environment for Christian believers and followers of Jesus Christ. Looking for answers? 
Grace Communion International Local Churches in Fairfield, Santa Rosa, and Modesto offers a comforting environment for Christians in search of spiritual growth and development. Contact a local ministry. Attend the local GCI churches at the times listed on your screen.